Welcome for mathematics lesson. We're going to discuss mathematics paper 2, section 1, whereby we'll begin with a logarithm question. Solve for x in the logarithm of x to base 3 squared minus a half. The logarithm of x to base 3 equals to 3 out of 2. Therefore, what we should start by doing here is uh, because we can see the logarithm of x to base 3 is appearing twice. It is in this case and also at this part. We can let to be a certain unknown. For instance, we can say let the logarithm of x to base 3 be something like t. So when it is t now, we can talk of now t squared minus half t because this is log of x to base 3 equals to 3 out of 2. We can do away with the fractions by multiplying by 2 through, which is common, to have 2 t squared minus t is equivalent to 3. And this can resolve to 2 t squared minus t minus 3 equivalent to 0. So the equation is now quadratic and we can solve the quadratic equation by having uh, the factorization method 2 times negative 3 gives us a product of negative 6. Then we need a sum of the value at b here which is negative 1. So this means we are having a <coughs> two factors which when multiplied is negative 6 and when added negative 1. These are negative 3 and 2. The sum will give us negative 1, the product negative 6. So now we can factorize this part. We can factorize this part whereby we begin with 2t squared minus 3t plus 2t. So I've substituted negative t with negative 3 and positive 2t. Then we have our negative 3 equivalent to 0. Then we can have a factorization. T is common in the first two to remain with 2t minus 3. Then in the second case, only one which is common. We remain with 2t minus 3 equivalent to 0. Then now we can talk of 2t minus 3 and t plus 1 being equivalent to 0. <clears throat> Therefore, we can talk of now each factorized root equals to 0 independently. So 2t minus 3 equals to 0 will give us 2t equivalent to 3. And the value of t is going to be 3 out of 2, which is 1.5. Or t is going to be when t plus 1 equals to 0, then t equals to negative 1. So those are the values of t, but we should remember that the value of t should be equated to the logarithm of x to base t. Therefore, I will uh, utilize the space here, whereby I'm supposed to say that the logarithm now to base 3 of x is equivalent to 1.5, or the logarithm to base 3 of x is equivalent to negative 1. Therefore, now we are going to change the logarithm equations into index notation, whereby in index notation, we say if we have the log of a to base b equals to 3, or equals to c, sorry, then this implies that when we convert this to index notation, when we take b power c, we should get the value of a. So this logarithm expression equals to this index expression. Therefore, applying the same here, 3 power 1.5 will give us x. So x equals to 3 power 1.5 or x equals to 3 power negative 1. So when we solve, we will find on this side, uh, x is equivalent to 1 out of 3, 1 out of 3, 
or on this side the value of x is going to be equivalent to 3 raised to 1.5 gives us 5.196 5.196 to four significant figures. So those are the two values of x. We can proceed with uh, another question here. <clears throat> In the figure below, pt is tangent to the circle from an external point p. So pt is a tangent to the circle from p. Then pt is equivalent to 24 centimeters and op equals to 25 centimeters. We are told to calculate the area of the shaded region correct to two decimal places. This one is the shaded region. This one is the shaded region. So we can find area of shaded region whereby <coughs> we can solve this by first of all uh, finding the radius of the circle. For us to find the area of the the radius of the circle, we will have two possible approaches. One, I might connect the center to the point of contact between the tangent and the circle. And mathematically, we know that radius of a circle and a tangent intersect to make 90 degrees. So it means with this base and this hypotenuse, we can get their known radius at this point, whereby we will say radius squared is equivalent to 25 squared minus 24 squared. Therefore, we're going to have the value of radius now calculated by when we take 25 squared minus 24 squared, then we take square root. This is giving us exactly 7 centimeters. So the radius is 7 centimeters. Now with radius, we can again move forward to get the angle at this point, the angle at the center of the circle. And angle at the center of the circle can be gotten using several approaches and because for triangle TOP, we got all the sides now, then we can use any trigonometric ratio. For instance, when I say the turn of that unknown angle is equivalent to opposite length out of adjacent, I'll have 24 out of 7. So that I get data, I'll need to take now the turn inverse of 24 out of 7. 24 out of 7. Therefore, the value of the angle at the center of this is going to be <clears throat> tan inverse of 24 out of 7. This is going to be 73.74. 73.74 degrees. So that is the angle at the center of the circle. Now with that angle, <clears throat> the shaded region now area can be obtained in that with area of triangle we can subtract area of this sector and we will remain with the shaded region therefore we will need area of triangle so shaded area is going to be triangle half base times height minus area of sector data out of 360 pi r squared. Therefore, I'm going to have a half times a base of 24 multiplied by a height of 7. Then I subtract theta, which is 73.74, divided by 360, multiplied by pi. This is a 22 out of 7, multiplied by 7 squared multiplied by 7 squared. Therefore, <clears throat> I can compute this side first so that I multiply 73.74 by 22 by 7 squared. Then I divide by 360 by 7. This is giving me 31.54 to two decimal places. 
Then on the other side, I'm going to have a half times 24, which is 12, then multiplied by 7, 84. So when I take 84 minus 31.54, this is giving me to two decimal places, 52.46. These are square centimeters. Square centimeters. So that is how we get area of that shaded part. And finally, we can look at our number three here, <clears throat> which talks about find the value of W in the expression. In the expression, or if the expression, this one is a perfect square, given that W is a constant. So W is a constant, and this expression is a perfect square. Let us find the value of W. What we are supposed to know is that for a perfect square, then we are supposed to have some information that if the quadratic expression, which is a perfect square, is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is a perfect square, then we should know uh, because a and b uh, are <clears throat> constants, then when we take the value of b and we divide by 2, then we squared perf perfect square, we should have a times c. So applying the same for the above expression, which is a perfect square, then I should say negative 3 out of 2, which is our b, divided by 2, sorry, then squared, should give us the value of a, which is w, multiplied by c, which is 1 out of 16. That is what I should get. So that, on the other side now, when I evaluate this, remember I'm going to have negative 3 out of 4. Then I square. I'm going to have 9 out of 16, equivalent to 1 out of 16, w. So to remain with w on that side, I should multiply both sides by 16, by 16, and 16 cancels out in both sides, and the value of w becomes 9. The value of w becomes 9. So that is how we get the value of a certain constant in a perfect square. Thank you for following this lesson. Remember to subscribe and to share this link with friends. For you to get learning resources, more so in mathematics and physics, contact us using the number shown on the screen. Thank you. Thank you so much.